This video may contain spoilers. Transformers 1 brings back many classic elements from the Transformers universe, including the iconic Matrix of Leadership. This legendary artifact plays a key role in the animated prequel, linking to the origins of Orion Pax who becomes Optimus Prime, and D-16, also known as Megatron. All right, all clear. Okay, hey, D-16, I may be a little dusty, but Corroda, that is too far. Let me guess, checked out of the archives? Yeah, I had to jump out of a window this time, almost died, <laughs> that's wild. And digging through ancient data is worth dying for. Yes, it is. The film explores their friendship before the divide between Autobots and Decepticons, setting the stage for the age-old conflict. As Transformers 1 begins to unravel this expansive story, it introduces new characters and concepts to deepen our understanding of the matrix of leadership. This includes Primus, the creator of the 13 Primes, the energy source known as Energon, and Cybertron itself. These elements all contribute to the significance of the matrix, especially during the film's climactic moments. Miners in the race? Miners! Those are miners like us! I can't believe what I'm seeing here. There are miners trying to run in the The Matrix of Leadership is one of the most powerful relics in Transformers lore. It channels the energy of Primus and is traditionally wielded by the chosen leader of the Autobots, deemed worthy by Primus himself. It also has the power to reignite a Transformer's spark, meaning it can resurrect those whose bodies have been destroyed beyond repair. While its ability to create and restore life is one of its greatest strengths, the Matrix can also manipulate energy and confirm who is worthy to lead. Passed down from one Autobot leader to the next, it remains a highly coveted object, often targeted by Decepticons and other enemies seeking its immense power. So just how did the Matrix of Leadership go missing? For generations, there was peace and prosperity until the Matrix of Leadership was lost. In Transformers 1, Sentinel Prime kills Zeta Prime and the other 13 Primes as a part of his scheme to seize the Matrix of Leadership for himself. Although he succeeds in eliminating the Primes, the Matrix rejects him, vanishing from Cybertron, and the artifact would only reappear when a Transformer worthy of its power emerged. Primus saw Sentinel's true manipulating nature. He was selfish, cowardly, and destructive making him unfit for the Matrix. Sentinel, why? For all the power of Cybertron. Unable to admit his failure, Sentinel instead spread a lie that the Quintessons were responsible for the Matrix disappearance, leaving Orion Pax, D-16, and the inhabitants of Iacon City hopeful that one day the Matrix would return. And as we see in the film, Orion Pax even volunteers to help Sentinel find it, unaware of the truth. Which means, this is where we could find the Matrix of Leadership. Which begs the question, why was Optimus Prime chosen, but Sentinel wasn't? Unlike Sentinel, Orion is deemed worthy of the Matrix of Leadership due to his selflessness, courage, honesty, and unwavering hope. The moment that solidifies his worthiness is when he sacrifices himself to protect Sentinel and prevent Megatron from descending into darkness. Megatron knows the truth. So do I! He took everything from us! I have to do this! No, you don't. Rebuilding Iacon cannot begin with an execution. He deserves to die! Despite knowing Sentinel's betrayals, Orion believes that killing him isn't the solution, recognizing the dangers of vengeance. By putting his life on the line to save both an enemy and a friend, Orion demonstrates the qualities needed to lead the Transformers. This noble act proves to Primus that Orion is the rightful bearer of the Matrix. I am Megatron! Arise! Optimus Prime. But just how powerful is the Matrix of Leadership? Well, in Transformers 1, the Matrix of Leadership's power is on full display. Not only does it revive Orion Pax and transform him into Optimus Prime, it also restored the Transformers' transformation cogs and ensured that Energon flowed freely once more on Cybertron. With the possibility of sequels in the future, other powerful relics also may come into play, such as the Allspark, which predates the Transformers and has the ability to create worlds. 
Other legendary items like the Transwarp Key, Star Saber, or Requiem Blaster may also appear, each with its own unique abilities. I can only speculate how these ancient artifacts will play a role in future films, but I can tell you that I'm really excited with the idea of them being included. In the meantime, the Matrix of Leadership remains a uniquely powerful force in the Transformers 1 universe. But if you're anything like me, you're probably already wondering how the Matrix of Leadership is going to play a role in any sequels to Transformers 1. Optimus Prime is now in possession of the Matrix, and Cybertron is thriving again. Energon is no longer scarce, and the Transformers have regained their ability to transform. Life in Iacon City is pretty good, but the loss of Energon shipments to the Quintessons could lead to new conflicts in future films. But our minds, they're running out. There's barely enough energy for us. So while we can hope for a story that's very similar to the War for Cybertron video games, I think it's more likely that we're going to see the Autobots and the Decepticons set their differences aside at least for a short period of time and be forced to work together to take on the Quintessons and drive them out of Cybertron. Even though Optimus and Megatron now know the truth about what happened with the 13 Primes and Sentinel's betrayal, the Quintessons are still a looming threat and it will have to be addressed in the sequel. Is it possible that the Quintessons want more than just Energon from Cybertron? Perhaps they want to claim the Matrix for themselves. And of course we have to worry about Megatron and the Decepticons, because even if they set their differences aside to work with the Autobots to push out the Quintessons, there's always the possibility that Megatron wants the Matrix for himself. Megatron might not be worthy of the Matrix, but what if he found a way to be able to use it? Bear witness! This is the last time I show mercy! Decide! Right now! You can stay here in hiding, bowing before your pathetic leader! Or follow me as we march on Iacon and I take down Sentinel once and for all! I think that's something that we can be excited about as we look ahead to potential sequels. And I truly believe the Matrix will continue to shape the fate of the Autobots, the Decepticons, and all of Cybertron in future films set in the Transformers 1 universe. But what are your thoughts about the Matrix of Leadership and the role it could play in a possible sequel? Do you think it's something that Megatron or even the Quintessons may seek to claim? And let's pretend for a moment that even if Megatron did get his hands on the Matrix of Leadership, would he be able to find a way to use it even if he wasn't worthy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and sub to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Rest assured, I will find the Matrix of Leadership so that Energon can flow again. But that's in the future.